Hey folks, welcome back to the Mechanic on Rope. Today, I'm taking another crack at uh, aluminum air batteries, a tech that one day might reshape how we think about power. Using nothing but some aluminum foil, some off-the-shelf drain cleaner, and a cathode that I made myself, we're going to build a working power cell. Making aluminum air batteries has been an ongoing project on my channel for a couple of years now, and each time, I learn something new. Today's focus is all about making a complete cell using materials that are both cost effective and common. I'll let you be the final judge at the end of the video, but I think I nailed it. You're going to want to stick around for this, so let's get started. All batteries have three core components, the anode, cathode, and electrolyte. There's also the container that holds it all together. For this project, the anode is regular aluminum foil, about one square foot fold it up per test. The electrolyte is a drain cleaner, specifically one that contains both bleach and sodium hydroxide. I chose this type because it's very reactive to aluminum and also thicker than water, which makes spills a lot easier to clean up. The container is made from a numbersome plastic, which can have stronger than normal resistances to caustic substances. The cathode is where it gets interesting. I made it myself using plastic activated charcoal, and manganese dioxide harvested from spent AA batteries. This design boosts performance significantly over loose charcoal and is cheaper than using graphite. If you want to learn how I made it and the ABS glue that holds it all together, I've got a separate video linked in the description. Now that we've got our parts, let's build. Remember, always wear proper personal protective equipment and work in a well-ventilated area when handling chemicals like drain cleaner. I'm only filling the container part way to leave room for hydrogen buildup, which is a byproduct when aluminum reacts with a strong base. As the reaction kicks off, we're already seeing solid numbers. 1.5 volts and over 500 milliamps. That is the highest output I've ever had on this channel, which is awesome. I wanted to put this power to good use but instead of building a 10 cell stack like I did in my first video, which considering the size of this cell would be massive, I used a voltage booster called a Jewel Thief. It doesn't add power, but converts low voltage to a higher one that's more usable. I'm planning on making a separate video that details how I made this, so stay tuned for that. Hooked up, the green LED on the Jewel Thief lights up immediately. When I connect the flashlight, boom, it's running off a single aluminum air battery. This flashlight drew about 10 milliamps and ran for five hours, giving us uh, approximate battery capacity of around 50 milliamp hours. Not mind blowing by commercial standards, but considering we made this from scratch, I'm very happy with it. The first test went great. But during the test, I noticed that hydrogen bubbles were actually lifting the electrodes. That reduced the reaction surface inside the electrolyte. So I made a couple small mods. After washing off the cathode from the first test, I cut a hole in the plastic lid that came with the container and glued the cathode into it using more ABS juice. I also drilled a vent hole to safely release any trapped hydrogen. Then. Instead of placing the aluminum foil around the side of the container, I placed it on the bottom with a piece sticking out so I could still connect to it. Now, with the cathode installed, when the anode does float up, the bottom of the cathode will keep it down. The bottom is solid ABS plastic and non-conductive, for those of you wondering. During this test, I also added a little bit of water to the drain cleaner to see if it would impact its performance. Unfortunately, that didn't work out well. Voltage dropped to 1.4 volts and the current was just over 300 milliamps. Still usable, but not what it was before. The flashlight still worked via the Jewel Thief, drawing about nine milliamps for four hours. I suspect it could have lasted longer because when I cleaned out the container after the reaction was completed, there were still unreacted chunks of aluminum in the container. The takeaway? Stick with undiluted drain cleaner. Besides producing weaker results, the water caused excess foaming and made quite the mess. Even though cleanup was easy, 
thanks to the drain cleaner's gel-like consistency. Okay, last test. What happens if we swap out the drain cleaner with salt water? I mixed up a batch of salt water at a ratio of 20 grams salt to 100 milliliters of water. I cleaned up my cathode a second time and reassembled everything with some more aluminum. Looking at the voltage now, I'm at 0.8 volts, which is expected for salt water. Amperage output is a respectable 120 milliamps. Not enough, however, to run the jewel thief in the flashlight properly, so I switched to a smaller side light that just drew one milliamp, and it ran for about 10 hours, giving us a 10 milliamp hour capacity. Even though it's low, that's still a functioning cell. Post-test inspection showed a lot of leftover aluminum. This is a downside to using salt water versus more caustic liquids like drain cleaner. The salt water creates a buildup of aluminum oxide that insulates the aluminum foil, slowing the reaction. Still, I could see white globs of aluminum trihydrate suspended in the electrolyte. This is a natural byproduct that confirms the reaction was working. So, after three tests and a handful of tweaks, I think this project is in a pretty good place. Did I nail it, like I said at the start of the video? Let me know in the comments. And if you found this video helpful or just cool, hit like and subscribe, and don't forget to check out the links in the description. I've got more aluminum air battery content, plus a full DIY battery course hosted on Udemy. Thanks for watching and supporting the channel. I'll see you in the next one. MGR signing out.